Hi, I'm Brad Washburn and welcome to Exposing Yourself to Flash. Today I want to show you some of the tools over here on the toolbar and to show you those we're going to create some 3D text. So the first tool we want is the text tool right here which is also T on the keyboard. And we'll just click here in the center and we'll create the word flash. And I've got my text size set to 100 over here in the properties. That's why it's so large. And I also set the tracking to 100 so that the text would be spaced out. Okay, if we change this to zero in the tracking, then you see our letters get close together. We don't want them close together. We want them to be kind of spaced out so we can work with them. So let's change that back to 100. And there we go. Okay, now to make this text 3D, what we want to do is we want to copy and paste it in place because we're going to have some text for the front of the 3D text and then we want to have some text for the back of the 3D text so it looks like it's stretching out into space. So to copy that, it's Command-C or if you're using Windows, it's Control-C and then we want to paste that in place. We can either go up here and paste in place which in, in the Mac is Command-Shift-V or in Windows, it's Control Shift V. So we'll do that, Command Shift V, and that pastes in place. Now we can't tell that anything happened. But if we push down the keyboard, the keyboard key down, then we can see it moving out of the way. So now we've got one that's in front here and one that's in back. Now we want to change the color of the one in front here so that we can tell it apart from the one in back. So we'll make it just a little bit lighter. Now to actually work with this text, we're going to have to turn it into, instead of a text object, to be a graphical object. So let's select both of those. And the way that we do this is we break it apart. So we can go either to the Modify menu and break apart, which is Command-B or Control-B in Windows. Or we can just use that shortcut I just mentioned. So now that I've got it break, broken apart into individual letters, I want to break it apart even further. So I'm going to do Command B, and now I've got it as actual objects that I can select and work with if I need to. So to make this 3D, is what we need to do is we need to connect the back flash with the front flash, and we're going to do that with lines. So let's go to our line tool here, which is also N on the keyboard, and we'll draw some lines connecting all the little points here. And I've actually got my computer set up so that these lines will snap to where I need them to be. And to do that, you go into View, Snapping, and you do Snap to Guide, Snap to Objects, or Snap to a Line. The reason mine's snapping the way it is is because Snap to Objects is selected. So let's go back and finish these ones. And we don't need to do this one to that one because it's going to be hidden by this 3D edge right here. We just need to do the ones that are going to show. There's quite a few of them, so this is going to take a few minutes. We'll move them as quick as we can. Let's move on over to the H, because the S is going to be a little bit weird. So far, they've all, all the letters we've done have been straight lines, pretty uniform, but the S is curved, so we have to do the lines a little differently. This one's going to be the same as the others. We're going to connect the two points, and back here we're going to connect the two points. But then we've got the, the curves that we're going to have to do. So we'll just go, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll just go about right here. Oh, and it snapped in the wrong place, so we'll do Command-Z or Control-Z to undo that. Let's zoom in on this, the zoom tool, or Z. Now that we're a little closer, you can see it's snapping more to where we want it to. Okay, now that we've got that done, let's zoom back out. So if we hold down the Alt key, then it lets us zoom out. And we've got the zoom tool selected. Okay, now we want to fill in all the spaces here where, um, where there's nothing in so we can connect these lines. So let's grab the 
paint bucket tool, which is K. And let's change our color back to the same color as the background. And then we'll just fill in all the empty spaces here. And this takes a few minutes. Now we want to be careful not to fill in right there because that is the middle of the A on the back part. Oh, let's undo that and get the white space if we can. There we go. And obviously this isn't going to be perfect because we're doing it real quick. But there we go. Now it's all filled in. So now it looks a little bit 3D, doesn't it? Now let's change some of these so that when we get rid of these lines, it'll still look 3D. So let's get our selection tool here. Okay, so now we've got our selection tool. Let's go to our color palette here. And let's change the color just a little bit again. Let's make it just a little bit darker. And we'll... Close that, and let's grab our paint bucket again with K. And then we'll fill in, for the dark sides, let's do the side part of all of them, the dark color. There we go. Now the S, you'll notice I left this part undone. We're going to do the S a little bit differently. So let's fill in here. Now one tool that we're going to use that we haven't really d discussed much is up in the color palette again. We've got solid color selected in our fill right now. Now we're going to change that to a linear gradient. Now what a gradient is, is it takes it from one color on one end of the gradient and moves it to another color and it does a gradual transition between the two colors. So the one color that we want is going to be this dark color here. The other color that we want is going to be the lighter gray here. So we want to fill in the parts of the S with the gradient because it's not a smooth surface, it's kind of curved. And then that looks pretty good, but we can adjust it a little bit. There's a tool for that. It's over underneath the free transform tool and it's called the gradient transform tool. And it's also F on the keyboard. So now we've got that selected and we select our gradient. Actually, we'll have to select our gradient first and then go to that tool. And then we can move this around however we need to to make our gradient look better, to make it look the way we want. And we'll actually want to do it opposite of how I just had it because we've got the dark side here and then the light side there. And we'll do that for all of these. And if we want to make it a little shorter, we can pull in there. And that looks pretty good. So now let's just select everything with our selection tool. And then if we go over here, we can get rid of our stroke, our lines, by changing it to having no line right here. And there we go. There's our 3D text. Well, that looks pretty good, I think. Well, thank you for joining us today. And tune in next time as we talk about more things in Flash.